guys. Good morning and welcome to today's Tuesday Truth um, with me, Ryan Jones. Um, Dave has foolishly asked me to do this week's Tuesday Truth, um, but um, I hope that I will do some due diligence in, in speaking to you guys today about something very personal and something that's that we should be doing, something that is amazing and such a great opportunity to spend time with the Lord. And um, yeah, I think... Uh, it's, it's such a, a broad topic. I think it's a topic we can all relate to. I think it's a topic that we can all say that we wish we could do better and wish we have been doing better. Um, so when you're looking at prayer and devotion, what is it that you believe about prayer? What is it that you think or the reasons why we pray? What is prayer? You know, and why do we spend time with God? And I think if we're, we're trying to, you know, um, think about it, like, do I pray to God when, when things are going wrong? Do I pray to God when things are great? Uh, do I only pray to God when I need something? Or like, what is that relationship? Is, is there a relationship? Or is, is God just a vending machine in my life that I just, you know, I put the prayers down and, and I'm just waiting for an answer and he must give them to me? Or I know in this time for me that in lockdown, it's been even harder for me to spend time with God, even though I want to. You'd think that before when I had more busyness in terms of just having like many things to do in a day and going here and there and preparing things uh, more, um, having more social engagements um, apart from COVID was just your life was just full of things. And it was almost okay to say, okay, well, I'm sorry, Lord, I couldn't pray or I couldn't spend time with you because I'm busy, you know, I'm so busy um, as if I'm a celebrity or something. But I know that we all have um, you know, valid reasons for perhaps some of the times we haven't been able to. And if you're anything like me, I know that in this lockdown season or in this time of COVID, it's been even worse for me. Even though there's been more opening time or free time, I've been filling it up with other things. Um, procrastinating really good. If you're anything like me, just a quick little game of Modern Warfare or game of Fortnite or something or reading something or watching a quick movie or watching a clip getting sucked into YouTube or sucked into some Facebook videos because I'm just like watching Twitch or watching a couple of guys doing some funny things and, I, and I, like an hour passes I'm like oh goodness well sorry and I have to get back to work but yet I spend so much time on, on, on frivolous things and that's not to mean that I can't enjoy or you can't enjoy those great things but when I'm saying that I can't spend time with God and rather do those things always can be a bit of a problem if it becomes just an excuse that I have and yet inside I'm like, I really want to spend time with God. And, you know, there's a, an apologist, Robbie Zacharias, who a um, Christian theologian, he studies the word of God and he's a pastor and he was just like, God is where you leave him. You know, like uh, people always shout out or, or have a complaint, oh, but God, where was God when this happened or when this happened? And, you know, suffering happens in the world, but also, Ravi would say that God is where you left him. He doesn't leave you anywhere. He doesn't move away from us. But it's where is he in relation to us? You know, are we, you know, we look at just this time of fatigue on videos. Like, I mean, surprise, I'm on a video with you guys. But, you know, our whole lives, whether it's maybe your, your teaching, maybe you've been getting lessons from your teacher over Zoom calls, You've been chatting to your friends over, you know, over video call, whether whatever Zoom or whatever it is that you're using. Uh, maybe you're messaging over Insta or just messaging over something, and it's just not the same as having a real interaction with somebody. You know, it's not seeing them in person, being able to, you know, feed off their body language, being able to high five, hug, um, you know, shake someone's hand. Um, you know, it's 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 different. Time is different, and maybe you feel like that. Maybe you feel that distancing that you're feeling now, and that fatigue of just trying to carry on day by day. Um, you know, your year hasn't maybe been the way that you'd hoped it to be. None of us, I think, have thought that our year would be the way that it is. And maybe it's just like put a toll on your on your prayer life. Even though you've had more time, you just feel a little bit more lonely, a little bit more depressed, a little bit more tired. And, you know, that that's okay. But we need to work through these things, you know, because human beings are not made that we live life in isolation. We should be living life together. You know, and um, I just want to encourage you guys today because the easy thing would be to wrap off all the times that God says we need to pray or the examples. And, and I mean, I'm going to give some of those examples, but it's more less about just doing the action and about the heart behind the, the prayer that's happening. And I think that's so vital because it's be easy to just go, you know, like I could, 
just beat myself on the back and go, Ryan, you know, you should be praying more. You should be spending time with God more. Now. You need to tell these guys to do the same thing. But I go, we could tell each other we need to do that. But maybe for a few days, maybe for a day, we would do it because we feel a bit guilty. But if I don't want to do it, then it's just a chore. And God doesn't want a relationship to be a chore. He doesn't want us to feel, oh, man, like I have to speak to this guy now. You know, like that's not like if you're hanging out with your friends, you don't want to feel that. When you want to, when you know you're going to see your friends again, don't you get excited? It's like, oh, man, I can't wait to see them. I can't wait for this lockdown to be end over and, you know, be able to go back and, and do the things we used to do and just hang out together and laugh together. And like that's what God wants. He doesn't want us to have this long distance, social, awkward distanced kind of relationship and, and and perhaps that's how you feel with god you feel like it's this long distance call and i think we need to to just look at the reasons why and it's because our hearts need to want god not just the head knowledge of okay do x y and z and then i want to do them that's never going to happen it doesn't matter how many times we tell that we need to i can give you many pointers of how to pray or what to pray as, as examples to kind of help but if our hearts don't even want to do it to begin with and it's pointless, you know. Um, you don't want to spend time with a friend that doesn't really want to spend time with you, you know. So if we look at that, we we look at, at how Jesus prayed and that he prayed when, you know, in Luke 6, 12, he prayed all night before choosing disciples, so before making big decisions in life. You, you see that Jesus is there and before God, the Father. We see that in Mark 1, 35, Jesus prayed in the early morning before going to preach, so before he even committed his day whatever work he had planned, he would pray before. And we would see even in Matthew 6, 5, he teaches us how to pray and saying that, like, just saying a bunch of words. And, you know, if we just repeat the same word over and over again, it's not some magic incantation that's going to twist God's arm. You know, that's not how God is. He hears you first time round. You know, like we, we keep praying for sure, but it's not like we say special words and then the thing like a puzzle will magically give us what we want. Or like a genie, we rub the lamp and it just happens. But he says, like, don't use these frivolous words. He says, go into your room, close the door, and in secret, open your heart to God. Like you're having a conversation with someone you love dearly and, and, and that you can share your heart with. That's what he's talking about. Real relationship, real, real relationship where you can be truly you and not have to be pretending to be someone better than what you are. So when we see that, a Psalm 119 just really did something for me when I was trying to think through this uh, prayer and devotion um, Tuesday Truth. And it just the psalmist says, How happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk according to the Lord's instruction. Happy are those who keep the Lord's decrees and seek Him with all their heart. And I think that is the key for me. That is the key is don't just go and do the instructions. The, the psalmist is kind of, he, he, he's finding something first. He goes with all my heart because he knows that if he tries to just follow the laws to the letter, trying to just do everything right, like a little tick box, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. That's not what it is because he'll eventually just stop doing it. He, he knows that to follow the Lord's instructions and to follow the commands means I need to follow Lord, the Lord with my whole heart. Have you ever followed anything with your whole heart? Have you ever loved um, a person or something you're doing, a sport or whatever it is, with your whole heart? And that is what we need to bring towards the Lord in, in that in this time, we, we, we feel like God is maybe far away, but it's actually us that move away from God, not the other way around. And what I want you guys to know this morning is that God loves you deeply. He gave his only son for you and for me, and I'm a nobody. I'm just one beggar telling another beggar where to find food. I'm just saying to you, listen, I'm just as broken. I'm, I'm, an, I'm not bitter, but yet I know God loves me because the gospel is so amazing that we had a disease worse than COVID, something that you can't just catch. You were born with it. And that's sin. We hurt each other. We, we, we want to do, we want to be the captain of our own ship. We want to live life the way we want to do. We want to step over people to be better or more popular or more loved. And, and, and we're just are trying to attain these things that never give us joy. And yet the Lord has given Jesus freely up to death on the cross for our sin, for our brokenness, so that you and I can sit before him in righteousness and have a relationship with God, to have a relationship. And that is amazing to be set free that, that disease of sin has been taken away from us, that, that nothing, whatever happens to us in this earth, that we will have eternal life with God forever and we are forgiven for anything we did yesterday, today, or even tomorrow. Jesus died for all of our sins. 
as long as we are willing to come and repent to to and repent means to to say our sin to him to say lord i'm really sorry and then turn away from those bad things don't keep doing them or at least in your heart like premeditating that oh i want to do it you know so when we do fall and we will as we go forward the god will be so quick to to receive us we mustn't feel guilt oh, i've fallen again and he goes yeah but i died once and for all for you and that's the beauty of the gospel and and if i could in any way Help you guys remember that. Just remember, no matter what you've done, he loves you. You are not alone. No matter what your friends have said or done or whatever you've done, you are loved. No matter if you're in a hard position or Jesus loves you. And if you're just open to him and open your heart to him, all those that are his cannot be taken from his hand. And, and the gospel is what will keep us humble. The gospel is what is going to make you and I want to pray because we're just so thankful. God no longer is like a long distance, social distance Zoom call, but he's in person with us. He's allowed us to convene back with God the Father because he died in our place. So where we couldn't be around a holy God, he's taken our sin and given us his righteousness so that we can. When we pray, our prayers don't hit the ceiling. They don't just hit the ceiling and come back down. He hears us and he loves us if we are able and willing to just sit before him and be real with him. So I encourage you. I encourage you this morning is just to be real with God. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's hurt. Maybe it's confusion. Wherever you're at, speak to God about it. That's a prayer. I don't, I don't, I don't wish to think that I know where you guys come from or your individual stories of religion, religiosity, legalism, like just ticking off boxes or what your idea of prayer is. But prayer is just speaking to God. And you can speak to him on how you feel. And the church, we are here for you. Um, your leaders are here for you. Would you reach out to someone who is wise, who's been walking with God for a little while to just help you through some of these things, help you to wrestle? And just know that your love, the gospel, is what is important. It's what will set you free and give you joy to want to follow Jesus. It will give you joy to want to spend time with him and to pray. So I urge you, those are the steps that I wish for you to take today, is that we would say a prayer together of just, Lord, help my heart. And then seek help if you need it in any way, shape or form, you know. And from there is where we can start developing prayer lives and devotional lives with God. Just to know that he loves you and wants to spend time with you. So I pray that this will be encouraging to you this morning. I, I really and truly do. And I pray that God will bless you today. So let us pray together. Father God, I just want to thank you for these, these wonderful guys and girls and just who they are, Lord who you've made them to be in. Just pray that even as um, COVID has been a difficult time, whether their home situation or whether friend situations, whether it's loneliness, whether it's anger, whether it's frustration, whether it's boredom, just ask, Father, for your grace and your love over them, that they would know, Jesus, that you love them immensely, that you gave your life on the cross so that they can be saved, that they can no longer have to need what the world is telling them they need. God, I pray that you would give them bravery and courage to confess where they are hurt, to confess to you where they need help, and that, that they would know that they are loved by the church, that, that the youth ministry, that, that we love them, that, that they can speak to a leader, that they can speak to somebody that, that, that really cares and that wants to help them wherever they're at. Or maybe it's just encouragement or just to show them how to pray or just a, a season of, of learning, or that they would know that life was so much more than then a pandemic, then a season, then all these things that have happened through this crazy year that we've all had to go through. Lord, I pray that we would have changed hearts for you um, so that we would be able to even want to pray and have devotions, that we would be able to speak honestly and openly with you on how we feel and where we're at. Father, thank you for every one of these wonderful teens that, that, you've, that you've made us all friends and given us an opportunity to have relationships with one another. We pray for the day that we can gather again as a family and just be able to enjoy company and watch videos and laugh together and play games together and, and read your word together and, and just enjoy the, the wonderful things that you've given us in this world. So Lord, we just lift up your name and thank you and ask you to please help us and change us so that we would know you deeply and that we would know that we are loved. It's in your wonderful name we pray. Amen.
Thanks, guys. I uh, hope you have a, a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. And uh, yeah, I uh, would love to have a chat with any of you if anyone needs to chat. Um, you can get my details from Riz or Dave. And uh, yeah, otherwise, please chat to your leaders, chat to Dave, chat to the team. Um, we're here for you. We'd love to serve you in any way, shape or form that we can. So have a great day. Uh, try to uh, get whatever schoolwork you need done. Don't be like me. Play less Fortnite and less Modern Warfare. And uh, yeah, uh, spend less time on social media, which I know is not a difficult thing to do sometimes, I guess. But yeah, send you guys much love. God bless. Thank you.